These percussion instruments have actually lived in four different countries on three continents. So they started out being manufactured in Argentina, made their way to Brazil, where they were sold, and then taken home to South Africa, where they remained for several years, and then shipped when the family moved to Ontario, Canada, just outside of Toronto. It's an amazing pair of congas from Argentina, made by a company called Colombo Percussion. And um, it has a, a black leatherette finish on it, which is something that I've never seen anybody else do. They're a little bit dirty, they're a little bit smudged. Um, they've just been really in storage in somebody's house for decades. Um, they, they would have gone from Argentina to South Africa and then at some point the family moved just outside of Toronto and um, the congas were really never used. You can, you can see that they haven't been. As I tune this up, the threads disappear into the closed body of the lug. I'll show you what I mean. You see, oh, no, it just came off. <laughs> of course, this one is getting looser because this one's getting tighter. And I'd say that's one, one drawback to the, the turnbuckles is that um, the way that they're shaped, they can just kind of fall off when they get loose. So as I go around, I've been around tightening it too much. As I go around and do this, all the threads are going to start to disappear, which is a pretty elegant look. Like if you look at these tuning rods, it's not just a straight piece of steel that's bent. It's actually got quite a bit of curvature going on. It's, it's thicker here, and then it's more slender here, and there's kind of like a kind of scooped out the profile is um, profile is very curved inward right here and then it comes back out again for a wider threaded area. A uh, very elegant looking handle. Um, really unusual leatherette finish turnbuckle style tuning rods, a comfort rims, mule skin head, That's pretty amazing. Oh, one thing, you'll notice that it was a bit, a bit teetery there. <laughs> there are these really nice rubber feet, but unfortunately two of the rubber feet have uh, broken off and it just um, has exposed the small nails that held it on are, are still present, but it makes it a little bit um, unsteady if you try to stand it up at the moment. And you can probably see a little bit with the lighting here. I'll do a close up later, but it's a solid stave construction. Those staves are, I'm just noticing they're quite narrow. I think these have a lot of potential. Okay, I'm gonna go get some more. Check that out. Really nice color on the head. They're kind of heavy. I tried tuning this one up a little bit uh, before I bought it. And um, I got the tuning up there a little bit, but um, I think that the tuning rod threads are pretty dirty. Um, so they're like really resisting. I didn't push it. So I'll have to uh, take all those off, clean them up, put some lube on there.
think it's meant to go about about there somewhere when it's raised up because of course the shell of the drum has a, a curve in it. I think they made the support very precisely to fit the curvature exactly. And I've got the felt in it and I'm going to keep my foot on this thing. I think it's going to just... The post that uh, the Kong does hang on is uh, neural. Neural, right? Can you are neural. Neural. The crown hoop is pulled down a fair bit more on this side than it is on this side. I think I'm going to have problems tuning this thing properly if I don't try to correct that. So I'm going to take the head off and I'm going to soak just the top of it. Uh, actually put this in about um, maybe a half inch of water in a sink. I'm going to pour some water so it kind of fills up like a bowl, but I'm only going to go as high as where the fold over uh, terminates here. So it's just about two thirds of the way up the rise. So I'm going to keep this flesh hoop edge area completely dry so it's going to stay nice and hard and formed. I'm not going to change that. The idea is just to soften uh, the area on the top and down the side enough to change the impression that the bearing edge is going to make. So I'll just do a quick close-up. As we can see here we're doing quite well with the distance from the crown hoop to the top of the bearing edge. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's check out these tumbadoras. I wanted to get a quick shot and a quick sound bite of these congas. I've just tuned them up for the first time for real. And I tune them up quickly, it's not perfect, but I just wanted to get a quick sound bite before I do anything else with the drums. The smaller drum has four rubber feet that are still in very good condition, so there's a little bit of airspace. Two of them are missing from this larger drum, so I took them off because every time you tried to stand the drum up, it would just try to fall over. Without the original rubber feet on the wood shell here, this conga is going to sit on the floor right on this metal band, which is quite a thick piece of um, chrome steel. The metal sits about an eighth of an inch proud of the wooden edge. So what I want to do is instead of replacing a foot that's kind of like this, that's the original one. I'm going to cut a ring of solid rubber and just glue it down um, and that'll get rid of the contact of the, the metal with the floor. The problem with these original rubber feet, as nice as they are, 
is that um, if you tilt the drum when you're playing it, you're going to be putting pressure on an angle on that foot. And they were just held in with these uh, little, nice little nails, which are pretty, pretty small. They were hammered into the rubber about halfway. Um, but um, yes, you can see even the two that were still on the drum are cracking. And uh, over time, rubber will dry out and crack anyway. But um, I just want to get rid of the contact between the metal and the floor. I found this all-purpose rubber. It's in a roll by Ecotrend, 24 by 54 inches, and it's 1 8 thick. I chose this particular rubber because it's a solid rubber and it's not too spongy. It's got um, a very minute amount of give to it. Like when you try to squeeze it with your fingers, it doesn't really give, but um, with some pressure from something heavy like a conga and so on, it'll probably have just a tiny bit of give, so it's not absolutely rigid. It's, it's pretty flexible stuff. But it looks very durable. It doesn't look like it, it'll crumble. Um, and it's an, an eighth of an inch thick. So that eighth of an inch is great for this because I might be able to cut one ring and that'll be enough. Or if I have to, I can cut a second one and just add another eighth of an inch. So I can make it as thick as I want with a good adhesive in between the uh, rubber layers. What I'll do is I'll trace out this circle and I'm gonna try cutting it with this box knife blade. We'll see how that goes. 